Hello and welcome. My name is Wahab Qureshi and I'm representing Inevitable Tech. In this episode, we'll be looking at how to automate your first scenario, or in this case, my first scenario. Prerequisites is you'll have Behat installed. Uh, if you haven't got that, please look at the previous video. Uh, a basic understanding of the web. Uh, objectives are uh, basically just one in this case is how to write a scenario against a remote website. We'll be looking at automating against a remote website because we don't want to get into the complexity of having our own website, our own code, and understanding all of that. This also gives you clarity in where Behat sits in terms of a project. Um, so we'll be as far away from actual production code as possible. Right, let's get into it. So we'll still be working with the same um, project that we were in the last video. Which is installing Behat. Nothing has changed since then. Oops. Opening my editor in this location, um, you'll see that it's exactly the same. Um, now, at this point, what we're trying to do is to make Behat communicate with a remote website and run a test against it. Now, it's important to understand that Behat does not come out of the box with the capability of communicating with websites. For that purpose, we have to install something called an extension. An extension provides um, Behat with certain capabilities, um, such as, in this case, communicating with websites. The extension that we're after is called Mink. Mink is a browser emulator that allows you to control the behavior of the browser and its interactions via programming. And type so Behat Mink. I can see there is a Behat Mink packagist page. This will probably be a developer's, you know, way of installing it. But if you're new to it, you may as well just read a bunch of stuff around it and familiar, familiarize yourself with the different components of Mink itself. So in here you can say installation Mink uh, is a PHP 5.3 library that you use inside your test suites or projects. Great stuff. We know that we need it, so we're just going to copy the required command from here paste it in and press enter. We'll leave this to run in the background and we'll go on. <clears throat> now, Mink gives you the capability to um, um, interact with web browsers, um, but the actual communication that's carried out is via a driver, which basically drives the browser itself. So Mink tells it what to do. How to do it is up to the driver. So this is basically, um, a list of the drivers that are compatible with um, Mink. So we need to pick one of those. I'm going to pick Goot driver because it's uh, headless. It doesn't have a lot of working components. The complexity is really reduced. So uh, instead of copying this, I've got a bunch of things that I've prepared, uh, which I'll just copy over to make things easier for us. And all this is doing is saying composer required dev behat behat. You don't have to specify it again, but I've just put it in there for safety reasons. Uh, behat meek extension that we want to install and behat meek good driver. So I'm just going to press enter on that. And when you run the require command with composer um, like this, a little bit of a tip. Um, it internally checks the compatibility between these three packages. So for example, if you installed one after the other, then there is a chance of conflict between the dependencies of each other. But if you run it in one, one line, then that means it will basically pull things, compare the versions and check the compatibility beforehand and install appropriate versions. So at this point, we've installed all the three components that we need to run the test, but we don't uh, have yet defined a way uh, for each of those components to interact with each other. We need to tell Behat that it needs to use the Mink Goot driver and the Mink extension to do its job. Let's get into that. We'll be making Behat aware of the Mink extension by creating a file called behat.yaml. This file um, stores all the different configuration parts of Behat uh, and it also stores the extensions part which will include the Mink extension I'm going to copy-paste uh, a default configuration that I've already set up. 
just to make things quicker I will leave this material for you to copy paste as well um, it just makes things a lot easier so here we've defined uh, various parts of the configuration um, a quick dive into this is this is default profile that's the profile name the first key in there uh, suites basically defines the suites inside the profile um, that it needs to run suites are basically a it's, it's a test suite, so it can encompass various amounts of various different tests inside of it. Uh, default is the name of the suite. It can be anything. You can change it. Um, contexts, um, it defines the files that hold the step definitions. We'll get into the step definitions a bit later. Uh, and at the moment, it's reading two step definitions. One is the feature context file, and the other is the mink context file. The second part um, that goes along with the suites is the extensions that we've enabled um, within Behat. So Behat has at the moment make extension enabled. Um, the browser name at this point is saying Chrome. We don't need that. We'll just get rid of that. Base URL, it's pointing to Wikipedia because we're going to run a test against a remote website. In this case, it's Wikipedia. Uh, the session that we've set up is um, the name is default. You could change it to pretty much anything, um, but default just works. Uh, and Goot is the driver that we're going to be using for this session. Okay, so let's move on to writing the actual test. It's been a while now. So we've created a search.feature file. You can just go ahead and create a new file. You can call it whatever you like. Um, it needs to relate to the feature that you're actually going to test or going to run the scenario on. Uh, in this case, we we'll call it search.feature. Um, we press enter and that will create the file. <clears throat> Inside, the first block represents the narrative of the feature that you're about to um, test. So that is in order to allow users to search through the vast array of articles on our site, uh, as a user, I want to have a search on every page. So that simply means that a search box needs to be available on every page, but it's also very powerful because it conveys the user who wants to use it, uh, and that puts into context how um, the, the requirement needs to be delivered. But that is all BDD. We don't need to talk about that. This is only for BHAT. Um, so, now then, we have a scenario here, and what you can do is you can basically have multiple scenarios in one file. So search for an article on the home page, then search for invalid characters uh, on the article page, and you can have other scenarios as well. There are certain keywords which mean certain things to be had. S scenario is one of those keywords when it detects a scenario it considers whatever follows it the title of the scenario <clears throat> then it expects the steps to conduct uh, the test itself and that it's written in the given when then format the givens are the preconditions the whens are the triggers and the thens are the results. Let's get rid of this for simplicity. Um, so imagine, you know, we are, we are about to test this um, Wikipedia page. Um, what is the precondition? What is the trigger? And what is the result? So the precondition is probably opening the page up, right? Because that is not the subject of the test itself opening the page up, visiting the website, that's a precondition. Uh, entering a bunch of text in here is part of the trigger. Clicking on the button is part of the trigger. What happens after that is the result. So that is how it, you would write the test. Right, so preconditions, as we've established, is going and visiting the page. And that can do by saying, given I am on Forward slash. We fill in the text box when I fill in with ABC. Let's call it text for now. And I press the button. Then I should see what should we see? Broadcasting. Okay, now if I run this test, I expect it to fail 
because I've assumed that the text box is called text and the button is called the button. So lo and behold, you can see when I fill in the text with ABC has failed because form field with ID, name, label, value, placeholder, text was not found on the page. So we can fix this, but we need to interrogate the page. So if you go back, you inspect um, the text box element. What you need is one of these, ID, name, label, value, placeholder. And they're pretty much in, in a good order, I'd say, that you need to look for these in this, in this order. If you can find an ID, that's the best outcome, followed by name, label, value, placeholder. So we're just going to go ahead and pick up the ID for now. <clears throat> Put that in here, run the test again, and hopefully that second step which failed previously will start to pass now. Great, so you can say it basically filled it in. The next thing is when I press block, the button with ID name title alt value was not found on the page. So again, we go ahead and we interrogate this. And it's called search, so we can use that text value over there. Search, and we run the test again. Fantastic, and it passes. So you may be wondering, you know, how does Behat even know what this means, what, what this line means, and all of this stuff? Um, fair question. These are called step definitions. Remember when I was defining or explaining to you what um, Behat YAML contains? Behat YAML contains two context files which contain step definitions. These are the step definitions that I was talking about at that point. So given I am on something, um, somewhere there's some code written specifically for this step definition that says open the browser and go to that page. Similarly for this step definition it says on the page you will find a field called this thing and you have to fill it with ABC. Um, to make it easier all of this is coming from the main context so we can go ahead and search up the main context. If you open the main context up you'll see exactly what I mean. I am on, you can even say home page, or you know, this is a step definition syntax, how you define one of these. And you can define your own step definitions, but that is not for this video. So this is how you basically uh, write all of these. Now you may be wondering, do I have to open these context files if I have to look up um, a step definition that I can use? Well, no, you don't. Uh, what you can do is vendor bin bhat, um, dash dl and that basically brings up the definitions list of all the step definitions that are available to you and you can see there are lots of them which you can use to do all sorts of various uh, manipulations but in cases where you don't have a step definition you can create your own and if you're after a particular step definition um, say for example you want to see what can I do with text can I apply a regular expression to it or something uh, then you can do dash D and the step definition partial text that you want to match on, press enter and it will come up with all the matches uh, in that respect. So once you have what you're looking for, you can put it in there and um, try it out. Um, so yeah, that's how you automate uh, a scenario and you can add as many as you want, as we've mentioned before, and be happy to execute all of them um, as soon as you run them like that. Um, and you'll see in a bit that you will run all three of those scenarios. Um, obviously you won't duplicate them just because uh, you uh, you know it's not the best form of testing just duplicated uh, scenarios. Uh, but you'll probably have different scenarios in here to say you know this is some other test. Uh, and also you can uh, run specific tests if you wanted to say for example this is on line 18 and you're working on this scenario in particular so you can say I want to uh, run this file and the scenario that is on line 18. Press enter and it will only run this particular scenario. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or want to leave any comments, please leave them below in the commenting section. 
we are next going to look at automating our own project.